hi everyone welcome in this video we are going to learn about Holt's double exponential smoothing method you can use this method as an alternative to linear trend forecasting method so both can be used and one may work better than the other one for different types of data sets in order to uh, start this forecasting method you know just find the values you have to initialize it and uh, you are going to provide an initial intercept and initial slope values and I just put that as time period zero values and I'm going to put 9,000 and 5,000 and you can comment uh, under here and just maybe indicate uh, if these two numbers as initial values make sense or not so once you have these two values now you can determine what the forecast is and the forecast is nothing but for the intercept plus the slope and in here uh, the forecast for year one is 14,000 but the actual value for year one is 13,931 now what we have to do is at this point at the end of year one we have to use this new information which is we not now know that the apple has made 13,931 and but we have forecasted 14,000 earlier and we are going to use this two information and calculate update our intercept and using a weighted average of those two and by just using alpha so i'm just going to put 0.5 so it is just going to get the average of those two and the formula for that is alpha times dt and alpha is here times the demand plus 1 minus alpha so if you pay attention I'm just putting a dollar sign there for the alphas because I am going to use that alpha all the time when I copy and paste this information times the forecast uh, for this period and which is 9,000 plus 5,000 and that is the intercept and in here when alpha is 0.5 it is just the average of this two <clears throat> now we are going to update the slope and what we see is the intercept of time period 0 is 9,000 and the intercept for nine, time period 1 is uh, 13,965 so there is an increase in the intercept and this increase we could just treat that as some kind of a change in the slope and we first estimated slope to be 5000 now we have to update that slope using beta so first I'm going to put a beta value of 0.5 and then put the formula and beta times the difference between the slope the intercept changes so d3 minus d2 plus and 1 minus beta 1 minus beta with the dollar sign times the slope uh, from the earlier period so it just looks at this change and also the earlier slope and finds a weighted average of them using beta if it is 0.5 it's just an average and once you have this you're done and now we're going to find a forecast for year two remember now we are at year one we're going to determine year two value assume that we do not know the year two value we have not used the 19,000 right we're going to try to find it so this plus this is going to give us this new value and this is closer right it's 19,315 and 18,948 so this process works like that until the end so what we could do is we can just drag this down and then we can also drag the forecast down and uh, as you can see here it is just taking the earlier intercept and slope values to determine the forecast now what's going to happen in year 2021 i will just drag this once and it just uses the information from year 2021 20 and gets the result so what's going to happen in year 2022 now we cannot just continue dragging 
because we don't have this two information yet so what's going to happen is we are going to assume that we're going to keep the same intercept and we are going to just add the slope on top of that so this is 287 we are going to add one more slope and find this value and add one more slope and find this value add one more slope and find this value this notation this formula is telling us exactly to do that so it is just saying that for for example for two or three periods uh, after period t if the period t is t16 then it is going to be take the intercept from the period t and plus the number of times like let's say two periods after two times the slope and in that case, what we could do is we can just put a formula. Instead of just putting here, we can say that it is going to be this number and put a dollar sign there plus this number, it is going to stay there. So we are putting a dollar sign there times and the difference between the time periods. So I can just use 17 and 16 or 2021 20, and 2020 20. it doesn't matter i'm just going to get the t here it's the same thing right there's number minus the number but i am going to just put a dollar sign for a 18 and i'm all set now this is the exact same result for 2021 and if i drag this down what's happening is this one is just adding one more 9960 on top of 287 and just makes it 297 so it is two times 18 minus 16 times 9960 is added to the intercept and then just added another one added another one and these are my forecast values for this four years okay so is this a good forecasting method and how can we make this maybe better and what's going to happen is we are going to find our absolute deviations we are not going to find the absolute deviations for the first one we will start from the second one and because this kind of we put some numbers there we weren't sure about and we'll just use uh, the second one to just maybe get the idea okay so in year two this is the the actual and this is the forecast the error that we can calculate is the difference but we are going to, we need to take the mul uh, the absolute value of that error so we will just make it absolute value of the difference between these two numbers and that is 367 and i can just drag this down and up to here not the other ones because i don't have any actual value there and these are my absolute deviations and if i take the average of those absolute deviations and i can find my error measure my forecast for my forecast and 16873 okay and then if i want to find the mean squared error what I need to do is I need to square these absolute deviations then I add them up and divide by the number of them so just square them and find their average and that's the mean squared error another way of maybe doing that is sum of x minus y square so find the x minus y's and square them and sum them up which is the values are here this is my one array <clears throat> and then the second array is here and this will just give me the squared of those differences think them as like square of the absolute divisions and then i'm going to divide that by count of that many numbers and that just gives me the mean squared error for uh, this forecasting method and then MAPE or sometimes you just you see them as MAPD mean absolute percentage error or mean absolute percentage deviation to find that we are going to 
find the absolute deviation divided by the the actual value and 1.9 percent and just drag this down and we see that we sometimes made a lot of errors so 36 percent error 29 percent error but on average on average it is going to be take a look at the average is 12.23 percent now as a forecaster our job is to minimize the error that we make so that if the fit is good we would be more uh, comfortable with the forecast value so we want to kind of find better alpha and beta values that makes this MAPE or MAD or MSE value the smallest and because the data has trend there are some bigger numbers and smaller numbers the 7000 you see here is much larger in effect than the 7000 you see here as you can see that this is only 3% but this 7000 is 21% so in that case if you only just minimize the the absolute deviations the average absolute deviations it may not work well for data sets that have a trend so my personal preference is to minimize the MAPE in this case and sometimes if you want to kind of take a precaution to the worst case scenarios then it may be a good idea to minimize the MSE because the MSE is minimizing the squared errors and when there is an outlier when there is you see some kind of a uh, an increase uh, or a large error value then MSE is going to make that even larger in magnitude because it is going to square it and if you try to minimize MSE MSE is going to put maybe more emphasis on those outliers if so if you don't want to have some outliers then you would maybe try to minimize your MSE value so in here, I'm just going to minimize my MAPE using this solver. So under the data tab, there is solver. And if you don't have it, you can go to file options and then add-ins and Excel add-ins go. And you can check the solver add-in, click OK. Under the data tab, you are going to see your solver. Now I click on solver and I'm going to minimize my so this is my objective is my MAPE I want to minimize that by changing variable cells and alpha and beta and then I'm going to just indicate that alpha and beta values are less than or equal to one and that's it I am going to use the evolutionary solver and I'm going to check the box may make unconstrained variables non-negative because this values I want them to be greater than zero and evolutionary solver on like the nonlinear solver this is a heuristic solver it may not you know it may give you some uh, solutions that the nonlinear solver may not be able to give nonlinear solver may just get stuck at the at a local minimum evolutionary may be able to kind of give you a better solution but not always so I'm going to click on solve in here and now it was able to reduce it to what 10.52 and 10.52 but alpha is 1 and beta is 0.09 so let's see how the uh, the graph of this forecast looks like so year revenue and forecast we highlight them and we insert a line chart just the recommended charts and the line chart and here is the forecast and if you look at here the orange line is kind of lagging behind the blue line the annual revenues and we can see that this forecast is uh, kind of mimicking a naive forecast it just looks at the earlier demand value and updates itself kind of a forecast and it was able to come up with a better MAPE by doing that so is this better than the linear trend forecast 
we never know because this could be an overfit and at the end because uh, you know it has a lower MAPE value but it doesn't mean that at the end of the you know 2021 we are going to see a better forecast than the linear trend forecast so the things may change and the linear trend forecast even though the linear trend forecast has a larger MAPE it may end up providing a better uh, forecast value so in here if I only consider the the error measure then I would just say that in year 2021 I would expect that the revenues are going to be 288,758 but if I say hey that's an overfit let me just take a linear trend and I'm going to ignore the errors that I make uh, that's larger error size then I would just assume that the revenues are going to be 315 uh, 129 for year 2021 I hope it makes sense and thanks for watching